And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, Interim Director at WEIU Radio Television. My guests are from the Mattoon Arts Council today. We have Beth Hildebrandt, Janan Colden, and Michelle England. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Good morning. Appreciate you coming in on this uh, Monday of Art, Artworks Week. That's hard to say, Artworks Week. Uh, welcome. Um, let's just go, I, for the, I guess I always like to ask, our play done, which I really love to do, is just if people don't know what's going on this weekend, give us an overview. We'll get into some details as, as the show goes on. But, you know, Artworks, this, you know, the big event this weekend in Mattoon, what is it? Um, it's our eighth year of presenting this festival the first few years we're in peterson park the last few have been downtown in heritage park and at the depot so we've expanded to two days this year friday evening and sunday or i'm sorry saturday 10 to 2 so there will be live music uh, artist booths selling their locally made uh handcrafted items make and take art activities for kids so they can come out and make some things for free take them home with them there'll be some food booths and then on friday evening we have a wine tasting uh, in the lone elm room of the depot sounds like a good time and hopefully the weather will stay like it was this past weekend where it was perfect you know not too sunny and and the rain stayed away um one of the neat things that on the press release you sent that i want to talk about before we kind of get into the details of the eighth annual is it's the 20th year of the Mar mattoon arts council so do any of you uh know the details about the start and how it got to be where it is now and, and fill some of that in before we get going uh the city of mattoon created the mattoon arts council in 1999 uh we are a group of volunteers. Uh, nine members serve on the actual board. Uh, Janan and I used to be on the board. We no longer are, but we're still volunteers. So there are several people uh, throughout the city that help to volunteer to present a variety of art activities and programs for the city. Uh, but the board itself meets once a month. Uh, we are officially under the Mattoon Tourism and Arts Office, so Angelia Burgett, and we have an arts coordinator now that helps us keep organized, which is really nice after it was just a bunch of volunteers for a while. So Julia Degler uh, Whitmore also works in the Mattoon Tourism and Arts Office, and she helps coordinate our, our activities. But uh, Arts Council itself started, you know, the city just wanted to have a group dedicated to presenting arts, Mattoon, I think, is known for its sports, which is awesome. Uh, for the last 20 years, we've been trying to create an art scene, and I think we've been successful at that. Uh, we were responsible for at least kicking off the mural program, getting ready to have the third mural uh, in that parking lot right by the depot. That wall is going to be filled oh, soon really? with the third mural. Uh, we have a whole separate committee that handles that now, but it started with the Arts Council. We were responsible for renovating the Lone Elm Room in the depot into a performance space. So we have a lot of art classes and exhibits and music performances in there. And we do lots of other things, scholarships for matching kids to go to art camps. Uh, we display an artist every other month. It used to be at Common Grounds. Once they close, Harder to do now. <laughs> right? We do that at Artsy Chic uh, Studio now, yep. which is also on Broadway Avenue. So lots of activities just related to the arts, music, theater, uh, visual arts, and we just try to keep all of those options open. Okay, now, Michelle and Janon, you're both are volunteers. So talk about maybe duties of volunteers as we head into this actual weekend for arts work. What you're each going to do? We'll let Michelle go first. Well. I, I just pretty much assist these other two ladies, but we um, coordinate with local people and people in the area to bring the art to the city of Mattoon. We also are um, thrilled to have Scott Barber back, and he is a Mattoon MHS graduate, and he does the chalk drawing for us and has for the last couple of years. So we're excited to have him back presenting his art, and he'll be doing it as you're there at the event. So that's an exciting part to the um, weekend. And also, I'm excited that we were able to incorporate the wine tasting and the beer tasting this year. And that's a fun event, um, very well attended. We have local musicians that perform during that event. And it's just a great time to get out and enjoy Matt Toon. Janelle, I'll let you answer or talk a little bit about what's going on this week. Well, Michelle helps out a lot because she knows everyone. So <laughs> she's been a great contact for lots of people in our community. Um, but a lot of what I do this week is just uh, coordinating all of the vendors and getting a hold of them and figuring out where they're going to be placed and making a map and drawing chalk lines on the ground outside and um, just making sure that everybody has a place and knows where to go and you hand out you know, all the forms to everybody who shows up. Um, so that that's been my job. So, 
how many different mm-hmm. vendors will we, I mean, and different, and, you know, exhibitors will be out there on Friday night and Saturday? Um, there's going to be four, at least 14 artists selling their artwork, um, but then we also have, you know, 10 other tents that will be out there for make and take events for kids and um, just some other community uh, organizations like R.C. Sheik want, is out there and she's going to do a make and take and sell her artwork. Um, so, you know, there'll be about 20 tents out there uh, in Heritage Park and we're going to block off the road there um, on Broadway right in front of the depot. So, um, it'll be a big event down downtown. And yeah, I was just, you, you kind of answered my question. I was like, you, so you really can't drive downtown between it's what that 16th Street there and it's about 18th or whatever. Um, so you with the 20th. So best people is just to park away and then you know walk up and kind of enjoy the evening. Is yeah. it the easiest way to, to tell people to get there? Yeah, it'll just be a very small part of Broadway that we blocked off right in front of the depot. Okay. So you can come in. Uh, from the Casey Summers area, but you'll have to stop. <laughs> but the other area where all the businesses are, those those uh, streets will be open. Okay. Yeah, so you'll be, still be able to come to the 17th, and so it'll just be from like 17th across the bridge, and okay. so you'll still be able to park close and and um, just don't drive right down in front of the. It's the yeah. eighth annual mm-hmm. Artworks, and it's two days now, so you've expanded it. So let's kind of go through mm-hmm. Friday's night's events uh, one by one, and you can all kind of just talk about some of the highlights that people can expect. And that's this Friday night, by the way, which is June 7th. So talk about Friday night, what people can expect. We have an art show going on in the Lone Depot, so it'll be all of the um, winners, the ribbon winners of all of our past shows. So we'll have about 30 artworks on display there in the Lone Elm Room, and um, we'll also have uh, a sip and paint. So the RC Chic is going to have a sip and paint. People can still sign up to do that on the, the porch um on the back uh, porch of the depot so um and then we'll have the wine tasting and beer tasting inside the lone elm tree or tree room from uh (laughs) from six to ten on friday and then jay ferguson's playing right that is it the entertainment yeah Yeah, jay ferguson trio will be there performing throughout from six to ten p.m okay and there'll be the don soul food truck will be there also that night so if you want to grab don soul you can do it right there (laughs) during the wine tasting nothing wrong with that at all uh then saturday everything opens up at 10 a.m at heritage park uh we'll let let you guys go through some of the uh, events and what people can expect i guess is it too late for anybody to get involved that wants to set up a a booth or anything or what's the deal on that nope if people still want to sign up they can go on the mattoon uh, artscouncil.org website and still fill out a form um and and send it in i would go ahead and call the office the mattoon arts council office as well just to say hey i want to be a late sign up so we'll stick till still take vendors um any, anybody who wants to do a make and take uh for kids and and host a booth for their like nonprofit business okay so go through saturday for us beth and Michelle okay and- uh, 10 a.m to 2 p.m uh, we will have activities outside and in the Lone Elm Room. So outside, there will be music on the Heritage Park, Park stage. Uh, that will include uh, music and dance performances. So dancers will include the Mattoon Way Vets, Marjean's Dance Studio, Dance Life Center from Charleston. And then the Sound Source uh, Music Store has several performance bands. I was going to say youth performance bands, but I'm not sure they're all youth. <laughs> but that is one of the things that the Arts Council has helped to sponsor yeah. so they will be out there uh, performing as well and then inside in the Lone Elm Room uh, musicians will include the Mattoon Community Band which is something fairly new uh, for our community and some of the members of the Irish Music Circle which has performed at Artworks for several years and they're always very popular. Okay when well, you say the make and take stuff uh, can you explain maybe to some of the people who have young kids about what age is that appropriate for and what kind of th- a couple of examples of what they'll be doing? Well make and takes are available for all ages young okay. and old alike like um, you can visit the different booths. It's, it keeps adding. We started with probably half a dozen. I think we're up to eight or nine now. But um, they're going to be doing things um, from Angie Jacobs at Reading Ground. She'll be doing bookmarks. Um, Transient Place just signed up to do it. Uh, make and take. Artsy Chic is going to be doing face painting, but then she's also going to be doing a marble p- pottery activity, which looks really interesting there's a jewelry making chalk drawing um, the library is going to be doing a space theme activity those are just a few of the activities that kids can engage in when they're there and the parents can just kind of walk them around and do a little art activity and then take it home with them anything else on that one 
In the past, this was a one-day event, I assume, and you, you expanded mm -hmm. to two. Talk about the reasoning, and 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 because as we go further on into night year nine, ten, eleven, and on, is it, do you want to make it bigger, or is there is there is there those far-reaching goals? Um. It's always been a Saturday-only event until this year, and we had the wine tasting running in conjunction with what was going on outside. Um, we decided to push the wine tasting down to Friday night just to see how that would work. So Friday night, to get into the Lone Elm Room, you have to be 21 and older, but on Saturday, it'll be open to everyone, all ages, for the music and the art uh, gallery that will still be on display. So we're just going to try it out and see how it goes. Um, it gets kind of hot in june so we used to go past 2 p.m and so we thought well maybe we'll do some events friday night and cut it off a little earlier on saturday to kind of beat the heat a little bit because it would get pretty scorching out there sometimes on three o'clock on a saturday afternoon in early june yeah now that finally <laughs> summer has arrived knock on wood right after that weird when winter and spring we had um where i mean do most of the exhibitors and vendors are they from i mean are they from around here mattoon charleston or i mean do you get anybody anybody farther away or how's that work um, lately, we, it, everything's been local. Um, for a couple of years, we did get some people from a little bit farther away in Indiana, but we've always really just tried to focus on, not that people from far away can't come, we'd love to have them, um, but we just really have always focused on, you know, who are our local artists. So we spend a lot of time recruiting. I'd like to give credit to Janan, too, because this whole festival was her idea oh, really? eight, eight, nine years ago, and the purpose was to give our local artists a place. Uh, Get them out in the public, let the community know what great artists we have living here, and giving them a chance to sell their, their items and put their items on display. So and right, She's I'll been our liaison for all the artists. I mean, she does a wonderful job recruiting them and, you know, following up with them and making connections with them. Sometimes they're her former students. Yes. <laughs> and we'll, get, we'll get into a little bit more of the individuals and, 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 and your background here in a little bit. A few more questions to ask about the actual event. And I want each of you to ask, answer this differently so you can't say, so, oh, I agree with what Beth said. Okay. So, so Beth gets to go first because <laughs> she's a veteran of being here on issues and attitudes. But when an event like this, why is it so important to Mattoon? I think it's important because it brings another side of the community out that doesn't always get recognition or to be seen. So um, we try to do it during the summers. That's difficult sometimes with everyone's competing schedules, but we have a lot of great local musicians, a lot of great local artists, and we want people to get, have a chance to see what talent, all kinds of artistic talent that we have here. Michelle? I will build on that, that it is a wonderful opportunity. Build on that. She, she didn't want to really break the rule. She's a school teacher, as you can tell, but she, she, she you know, fudged it. But it's all right. Um, because that's what I love most about this festival is that it allows the dancers, the musicians, the artists to really showcase their talent, their skill. And I feel like we just don't give people enough opportunity to really show what they can do and feature them as um, the featured artists for a weekend. And I love that we're able to do that in our local community. Janelle? Well, I, I'm a uh, local art teacher, <clears throat> so I, I of course want to uh, promote the arts. Um, and. I, I just feel like um, it's great for me to see my kids progress from, you know, being to taking an art class to really wanting to make art and sell art. So I really want to um, give the kids and people in this community a place to, um, you know, showcase that, that you can do it, that it doesn't have to be just something you do at home in your basement for fun. There you go. And then when you guys are meeting and talking about that, you know, the, this is the eighth annual one, but... You obviously always want to make these things, I always use the word fresh or new, so it's the, the people that have come to the first seven think, you know, why should I go to eight? So when you were meeting about number eight, you know, what kind of things are going through your mind? They said, oh, this will bring extra people or this will bring the returnees back. Well, it's kind of been the wine tasting was one of those things that we've added in yeah. the last few years to bring out a new a new crowd. And this year we really wanted to feature, we kind of started it a little bit last year with the um, beer tasting also, but we kind of wanted to um, grow that area a little bit this year. So I think we about have half wine, half beer, which is which is wonderful so we can, you know, attract more people. Now did you go with... Uh Local wines, or does that yes. the distributor gets to pick? So, yes, yeah, we went that. with a local winery, but then we also have some distributors to kind of give us a little more variety, and they're going to feature the local vineyards, okay. which I think is nice that we're featuring the local yeah, wineries. Yeah, you know, the wine business has become really local in this area. Right, yeah. and the local um, breweries. We have quite a few emerging breweries as 
you know, close as Urbana. And so it's kind of nice that we're featuring them also. And hopefully one day we'll have one in Coles County. Wouldn't that be <laughs> lovely? Yes. <laughs> We've been asking some people, but you know, mm-hmm. I guess there's, there's one license available in Charleston. We did, t- we did find that out mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago from, mm-hmm. from Mayor Combs. So mm-hmm. well, we're just, we're just still waiting. So, um, what are each of individually you three looking most forward to um, for this year? And you can't all say the wine tasting, all right? Because I'll know where to find you then, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something that you just you, you can't wait to see? Well, this person's artwork, maybe one of your former pupils, or oh. pottery is is my thing. So I always love going and seeing the pottery artists. So we have earth and wood that, that'll be there this year. Um, and I'm gonna give a shout out to Danny Reed because he hasn't signed up yet, but he said he would. So. <laughs> We're hoping Danny will send in his paperwork. <laughs> Beth, what are you most looking forward to this week? Um, I hope I'm not stealing Michelle's answers, mm-hmm. but I always look forward to our chalk artists. It's always amazing to me, the huge, wonderful um, Now, where do they do that at? Sorry to interrupt. But right I mean. on the sidewalk in front of the depot. Okay. Uh, so he's been here, what, three or four years. Mm-hmm. He starts in the morning and just, you know, you have this outline and you can watch him work throughout the day and you think... I don't know what that's going to be. You know, you can't hardly tell. He's putting on all these colors, and all of a sudden, near the end of the day, it really comes together, and it's just always fantastic. And that's so Scott Barber? Scott mm-hmm. Barber, yeah. Okay. And he's he, a Matthew High School grad? Yeah. All right. Yeah. He owns a um, um, graphic design um, in um, Champaign, okay. Urbana. So he's a, he's a local um, kid that um, has been able to take his art and do it full-time. Um, probably my... I'm excited this year about some of our food vendors. Um, I'm excited to have um, barbecue by Rubber Knuckles on um, Saturday and the Don Sol truck on Friday. That'll be exciting, too. And probably my very favorite thing is um, the Mini Donuts by Paws Mini Donuts <laughs> and the Brooklyn's, um, Brooklyn's um, Hawaiian Ice. But now you just made everyone in this room hungry and everyone listening. Uh, it's okay. lunchtime. It's lunchtime. <laughs> but probably I love the variety. We No two booths are alike. The variety of art is something that we really don't set out to do it that way, but it just happens that you've got such a wide variety of art and artists and vendors and that's what's exciting to see that in Mattoon. We're talking with three members of the Mattoon Arts uh, Council for Artworks 2019, which is this coming weekend, June 7th and 8th, in Mattoon, downtown, or Midtown Mattoon, I should say. I don't want to get that wrong, because um, I actually worked in Midtown when they named it Midtown, so if I mess <laughs> that up, I'll really be yelled at. Um, the other thing I think it's neat about this is I'm, I'm assuming, and I shouldn't assume, but I believe I've heard, is a lot of the Midtown businesses also try to have something in that two or three block area so that if people want to walk around and maybe you know, you know, know go in there to to cool down or get a drink or to have something to eat or to shop so do you know what some of them are doing and uh, you know in terms of events and, and things to get people to kind of drive business put you on the spot a little bit i know so we just walked around downtown and gave right. out flyers to everybody so they're gonna have posters and things right. so we we've, we've recruited a couple of them you know this mm-hmm. weekend so the the common readings right uh, uh, reading grounds. reading grounds reading ground. mm-hmm. um they're gonna come down we got them this just mm-hmm. you know an hour ago mm-hmm. um <laughs> so uh, but, I mean, the stores will be open, and people will be able to go in and shop. And, and Downtown Diner's always been very supportive of us, and Hunan's, she usually runs specials that day, and she's May's very supportive of our um, Artworks weekend. And, um, like I said, Sound Source provides the music right. for us. And, like I said, everybody's very excited about the event and looks forward to it. Is there anything on the event we forgot so far that we didn't touch base on? I don't want to leave anybody out or... Um, well, I'd like to ha- have the gals help me talk about Artsy Chic because that's kind of a cool story. And that all started with Janon and having um, Christine Keneally Browning as a student in her art class. And she came and did artworks, I don't remember how many years ago, but... and Three or four, probably. Three or yeah, four, three and four. did did really really well and that was kind of the kickoff then for her to be able to open artsy chic so janon can talk more about yeah that. so before she had the um studio downtown where you could go and take lessons um she came and did a booth at downtown with us so yeah. and then that was really it kind of snowballed from there and she decided to get a uh, rent a place and, and build a business so you know we're all really just really proud of her Very for proud. being able to you know expose um the community to the arts and at the same time you know run a business doing it and she's done really well and and um we're just glad to have her mm-hmm. now how is the mattoon 
portion of the Arts Council. I mean, how are you funded? Are you city funded or do you have to have outside donors? Talk about some of that if you would. Uh, we used to get a small uh, stipend or donation from the city of Mattoon. That hasn't happened for the last few years with budget cuts and that sort of thing. But uh, we had a major fundraising campaign five or six years ago led by one of our former members, uh, Bruce Carmazan, who's with the Lumpkin Foundation. And uh, that was pretty successful. Gave us a foundation, put some money in the bank, earn a little interest, uh, not relying solely on people just being nice to us in the community all the time, which is what we did for many years. Uh, so uh, with that uh, major fundraising campaign, that's how we were able to renovate the Lone Elm Room. If you come this weekend on Friday or Saturday, you'll get to see our donor wall, which is hanging on on uh, one of the walls in the room. Several matching businesses were very generous in donating to us, but also just some citizens who support the arts. And of course, we always take donations for that. Um, so for the last few years, we've just been um, funding ourselves basically through, no, through donations. Um, we have a budget through the Tourism and Arts uh, Office that we follow pretty closely to make sure that we're being good stewards of the city's money and the people who've donated to us and making sure we have enough to keep it going from year to year. All right, I want to talk about that mural, the third one that will be going up. Give us a timeline and what it's about. Give us what you can give. I know these are always somewhat secretive, but you know, give us a little breaking news there. I'll, you won't get in trouble, I promise. I'll start it, and then I'll let Janan jump in because she's the artist. But Janan and I are both also on that committee, mural committee. We have to give uh, all the credit to Justin Grady, who's uh, also another <laughs> former Mattoon Arts Council board member yeah. who still volunteers. So he has head up the mural committee since it started. Um, as you know, that third wall, the one across from the depot parking lot, that's been prepared and ready to go by the city for a while. We had, we were hoping to do this about a year ago. We were delayed a little bit as some work was done on the interior of that building. But it's ready to go now. Uh, we've always worked with the Philadelphia Mural Arts uh, Program to find artists. So a group of matching residents have met a couple times. We talked about what we want to see on the mural. Uh, we've chosen the artist. And he came to visit recently, and then I'll let Janan take it from there. Um, so the artist is, can we announce who the artist is? Uh, sure. Oh, yeah, we, sure. we, we love okay. breaking this. Uh, yeah. Don't give the, yeah. Uh, David Gwynn uh, is an artist from uh, a Philadelphia Arts um, Mural Association. Um, it's probably not the right title, but... Um, we get him from them, and uh, he came and showed us, uh, so we chose him out of three artists that we were looking at, and he came and talked to us and showed us some of his work, and he's very um, kind of impressionistic style, um, but he also does some very, um, you know, abstract um, kind of artwork, so we, we've asked him to do sort of a blend of that, so we don't yeah. want to repeat the same styles of murals that we already have up. We want to do something a little different, um, but we don't want to go too crazy so it doesn't, you know, we want it to represent something about Mattoon. Okay. So he's taken the information we've given him. It's a hard job for him because we had lots of ideas. <laughs> There's usually a lot of people that want to give the ideas to <laughs> Yeah, him. he's going back to Philadelphia now, and he's supposed to, you know, create some concepts for us to look at. And then um, over the winter, he will work on actually creating the mural on the cloth. Parachute. Parachute cloth. cloth. And then next spring, early summer, hopefully, is our plan. He will come and install it on that wall. Cool. That's neat. So we'll have a new, uh, by, by a year from now, we will, by Artworks 9, we will have a we new We did mural. mention to the artist when he was visiting, hey, by the way, we gave him the uh, the date of Artworks next year in case he wants to, you know, debut that mural yeah. at Artworks that next a, year. That would be awesome. But, you know, you no pressure. Nah. <laughs> He's got a year, so, you know. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your two backgrounds, uh, you know, in, 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 in terms of, you know, how you got involved in Mountain Arts Council, but also you know, a little bit of, you know, the, you know, who you are, what you've done, and you're, I know you're still a teacher at Mountain High School, so we'll mm -hmm. talk with Janan first. Yep, so I teach um, art at Mountain High School. Um, I've been there for 24 years, and, oh, I don't know, maybe 11, 12 years ago, Justin Grady came to me and said, hey, we'd like to have you on the Mountain Arts Council, and I said, sure, and I went to a couple <laughs> meetings, and, um, you know, just whatever they needed help with, I would volunteer, and, and then finally about eight years ago i said hey let's do this and i just kind of took charge i guess of <laughs> of uh making this happen and you know now it just kind of happens sort of without me a little bit um so we've got julia in the in the office and she kind of <laughs> she just has really done a lot She's uh, a good kid. To, to, okay. keep, to keep this <laughs> rolling people. and um 
and I just get to approve everything. So it's <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, that's where that's I'm at. That's your story. Michelle? I am a recently retired. Just this uh, year retired? Just this okay. year retired. Um, taught second grade at Williams, and I was the Project Extra gifted education teacher for about 12 years and taught Humboldt and <laughs> Like I said, Humboldt and Franklin School. And so I've just completed a very rewarding 34 year career teaching. And I, about eight years ago, was approached by a certain unknown person, Justin Grady, <laughs> that said, Hey, we're wanting to start an art works um, art festival. Would you be interested in helping? And the like eight years later, here we are. There you go. So the big one's coming up in two years, your 10th anniversary one. So if you guys already start thinking about that one, you can't look past nine. No, we haven't. <laughs> I, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. All right, a couple minutes left. Let's go unrelated, somewhat related, I guess, questions uh, so we can find out a little bit more about our guest today. We'll go right across the board, Michelle, first. Um, your favorite all-time artist or musician is? Probably musician, Bob Seger. And artist is probably Van Gogh. All right. Beth? Mm. I will go with Da Vinci or Degas. Boy. Music, I'm all over the board, but, you know, I'm, a, I'm an 80s kid. So uh, I like the hard rock from the 80s. I'll just keep it <laughs> general. Keep it I'll just keep it there, yeah. Very politically correct, yeah. yeah. Um, musician, uh, Billy Joel. Um, and artist would be Gustav Klimt. Okay. <laughs> now, artistic abilities. I mean, you know... Like, we'll let you go first this time. You said you're into ceramics, right? Um, Is that your yeah, I, I mean, I like to uh, paint. I don't really like to draw, but you have to draw to paint. So, But I love painting. Um, and, and pottery, ceramics, is, okay. is really my favorite. Beth, any abilities there? No. All right. I always <laughs> said I don't know why I was recruited for the Arts Council because I have zero <laughs> artistic them. ability. I have, yeah, I get it. So I'm a supporter of the arts, but I have no talent, or at least I haven't found my talent yet. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll keep trying. You Michelle? are artistically talented at keeping us organized. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what my talent is. It's probably people. And if people come to the artworks, I'll probably enjoy being there and enjoying their art and their being able to share their giftedness with the rest of us. The Mattoon Artworks is this Friday and Saturday, 7th and 8th, downtown Midtown Mattoon. Please go. Uh, we have about 40 seconds left. Any, any of you can answer. Give your, like, 20-second speech of why mm -hmm. someone should go this weekend. Um, this is the only time, I believe, in the city of Mattoon that something like this is offered. Local music, local artists, and I don't want to forget to give a shout-out to Casey Summers, who sponsors the wine tasting. He's a pretty good dude, too. Yeah, tasting. and uh, local vineyards, you know, we try to really promote local arts and businesses. Well, I appreciate all three of you coming in on this busy Monday. I know you had a great week. I look forward to uh, seeing you on Friday and Saturday. Midtown Mattoons Artworks this Friday and Saturday. Enjoy it and pray for some great weather this week. So thanks for coming in, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. This is WEIU.